Soon after the disappointment at Hot 97, the co-owners of The Source, Dave Mays and Ray Benzino, told me that the new Source Awards were about to take place in California. Look, you know this clown Jay-Z is running around fronting like shit is sweet, I told Benzino. If y'all want us to perform at the award show, then I need you to hook us up with 30 passes and seats for my boys. I promise we won't hurt Jay inside the venue or ruin your show. I just want to show this clown and everybody else what kind of power Mob Deep has. Please do this for me. Benzino paused for a moment, then said okay. The whole 12th Street crew got on the plane to Los Angeles. Havoc, Twin, Nitty, Godfather, Gotti, Free High, Little Lord, YG, Kiko, Derek from the Bronx, Mike DeLorean, Mr. Bars, Green Eyes, Larry the Movie Director, Fly, Prince Guard, me, and like 14 others. It was the first time on a plane for a lot of them. We stayed at a hotel across the street from the House of Blues on Sunset Boulevard. While we were stopped at a red light on our way back to the hotel from dinner, I looked over at a payphone on the sidewalk to my right and couldn't believe my eyes. It was our homeboy Draws from Queensbridge. What the hell was Draws doing in California on a random payphone? I rolled down the van window and yelled, Draws, get your ass in the van. Yo, Thun, I came out here with Thun and them dudes left me stranded. Draws, who only spoke Thun language, explained, Thun, this is crazy, I bumped into y'all like this. Draws was wild. The nerves in his hand were damaged from being shot, so his palms were always sweaty and he carried a washcloth everywhere. Back at the hotel, Draws told me how he was calling his man Rain at the payphone. You need to meet my thun Rain, Draws said. Thun got crazy connects in the music industry. I can't even get us some guns out here. Thun got a lot of ties in L.A. When he said guns, that sparked my interest. After about an hour, Draws told me his man 40 Glock was outside the hotel and Rain had arranged for him to bring us the hammers. In front of the hotel on Sunset Strip, a dude with cornrows introduced himself. What up, cuz? I'm 40 Glock. He's my little homies, he said, motioning to his boys. 40 was cool. I could tell he was a crip because of how he spoke and he and his homies had on blue. 40 Glock and his people met us at the Shrine Auditorium for the Source Awards the following day. We all had on custom-made football jerseys, with Hennessy, E&J, Seagram's, Thug Passion, Bacardi, and other liquor names embroidered on the front and our names on the back so our crew would stand out in the crowd. Little Kim flew out to perform the Quiet Storm remix with us and brought the whole Junior Mafia crew. Our dressing room was connected to Lil' Kim's, so my crew drank and smoked with them until taking our seats two rows from the front of the stage at Showtime. Tupac's group, the Outlaws, was seated directly in front of us. It was our first time seeing each other since the beef. And because so many of my boys were there, I didn't want to make the Outlaws feel uncomfortable. So I made small talk with them to let them know it was all good now. The famous polo model Tyson Beckford was also seated in front of us, and he pulled out a gallon of Hennessy from under his seat and showed it to Havoc and me. We told him to pass us the bottle back and thugged out the whole gallon. I didn't drink that hardcore shit anymore, but I had to take care of my boys. When the Houston rapper Scarface, seated in the road to our left, saw my team drinking, he was like, What's up, man? As if he wanted a cup. So we poured him one. By the time I gave Tyson Beckford back his bottle, it was mostly gone. Mob Deep was the final act of the night. Smoke filled the stage with the thunder from the Quiet Storm intro, while Havoc slowly drove a caddy truck on stage and hopped out when his verse began. The crowd erupted. I hopped out along with Noid, who was holding a gown of Seagram's gin, jumping around as it spilled all over. After Havoc's verse, Noid opened the back door of the truck and assisted the Queen Bee Little Kim out while she spit her verse. Hey yo, prodigy, tell him what it is, Dunn, Kim concluded. 
as I scream, yo, it's the real. My boys in the crowd were wailing like we were inside the tunnel back in NYC and the shrine went nuts. After my verse, a gang of death row bloods came storming through the entrance and charging the aisles from both sides. They ran to the stage while we were chanting the last few words of our chorus, chasing Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Snoop, who was with his crew, the Eastsiders, ran out the back exit while his boy, Trey D, stayed and fought a handful of death row dudes whipping their asses all by himself. The Shrine Auditorium turned into pandemonium with small fights breaking out in the crowd. 